Alright, so I'm going to be showing you my cell phone collection today. Um, I've got a Nokia 6190. I've got a Nokia 5190. I've got a Nokia 8290. I've got a Motorola StarTac 8000G and a Motorola StarTac 7000G. All those are GSM and they still work in the United States on the 1900 megahertz frequency. And then I've got the classic Motorola brick. This one's a Motorola Pulsar. Um, as you can see there, super thick. Really, really big phone. Um, this one, it still works. It turns on. Um, unbelievably good shape. As you can see, really, really ridiculous. Uh, that's a headphone jack for back in the day before wireless headsets. Um, thing's a beast. Uh, so it's on, it's flashing, no service. Uh, it doesn't get service anymore um, because AMPS was shut down in 2007. I used to have one of these and I actually was able to place a call on it back in like 2005 or so. But now let's see what happens when we dial a number. And we push send. Here. You can hear that it's a little warning. Nope, sorry, it ain't happening. Warning, that's what that is. Uh, so, anyways, really nice pulsar. You got the the green backlighting. Uh, really nice mobile device. Really big, too. Like they ain't playing around with this thing at all. Anyways, that is the first phone. Alright, so the next phone I'm going to show you guys is the Nokia 8290. Um, really, really high class phone as well. Almost as nice as the brick I just showed you. Uh, we got the infrared here. This thing had an infrared thing <laughs> that was able to do uh, send data up to, I think, about 3.5 kilobytes per second. So about half the speed of dial-up. Uh, really nice for $19.99. Um, so let me turn this thing on for you. I'm going to be putting my AT&T SIM card in. This thing's unlocked. Uh, so how this goes, just going to slip it on in. Nice and simple there. Battery on back on. We got the really nice Nokia logo engraved in the back there. Really, really nice. Turn it on from up here. This little anonymous button is to turn it on. And we start it up. We get... It's going to show us the Nokia with a little hand there. Really artsy. <laughs> uh, we got the date and time updated, so that's kind of nice for such an old phone. Um, these things run on the 1900 megahertz, so it gets service in the U.S. I've got my phone book here, my SIM phone book, because I have a bunch of old phones. I like to store the, my main numbers on the SIM card. Uh, menu, we got messages. We got, uh, this thing has T9 on it, believe it or not. Picture messages. This is a pi picture message. Uh, super nice um, to send that to somebody on their birthday or whatever uh, just to let them know you're thinking of, <laughs> of them. Uh, we got profiles you can customize it. This phone does have vibrate. Um, games we have the classic snake. Because of the infrared we, we are able to play two-player snake on this phone. If I had another one or another Nokia with infrared, I'd be able to do that. Um, so, of course, I will sample Snake for you. Uh, really quick, really fast-paced game. Um, much slower than I remember it when I was eight years old, that's for sure. Calculator, calendar, infrared, messages, that's pretty much it. That's the 8290 for you. 
really cool phone. Okay, next phone I'm going to show you guys is my Nokia 8890 right here. Um, this one also has infrared like the 8290. They're pretty much the exact same cell phone except this one looks visually way cooler in my opinion. Um, they really went all out. They've even got chrome behind the battery door. Uh, so you ain't going to find anything nicer than this. Um, anyways, put the SIM in. Put that in. This is metal. This is all metal. I don't know if that's metal, but I know the back is for sure. Got the fancy engraved there. This does have an antenna on it, which is fun. It's always fun to have a nice long antenna. Um, it's got the white backlight, which is really high class. This was like the nicest phone ever made, pretty much. This is, I think, the classiest phone ever made, and I know that I've said that in the past, but this is really it in my opinion. Um, anyways, the menu is the same as the 88 or the 8290. Uh, I've got all the same features, games, snake, two-player snake. So that's what we're gonna get set up right here. But before I do that, that that's the power button. We've got the side cover. You have to do it manually. Sadly, it doesn't eject by itself by pushing a button. Um, but still, it's pretty fun pretty thin phone. Uh, let me get out the 8290 now because we're gonna play some two-player snake. So this is just an old deactivated SIM card. I'm putting it in for the sole purpose of me being able to start my phone up and use it. So let's go ahead and get this uh, set up. We go to menu, and this works really bad. Uh, just so you guys know, infrared. Pretty much, if you put your finger over it, it blocks it. I tried. I tried playing some Snake the other day. It wasn't fun at all because it didn't really work. <laughs> uh, but I'm just gonna try and show you at least, and hopefully it functions at least moderately. So I'm on two-player. I'm gonna select. You see up there that says infrared's on and it's desperately trying to hunt down another phone I'm gonna put the two infrared things back to back and here you are two player snake and I won because I haven't been steering on this phone um, so anyways that's two player snake just to show you guys um, and this is the 8890 high class phone I love it a lot Alright, so I'm going to be showing you the StarTac 8000G. Um, I got its high class little desktop charger the other day. Uh, anyways, 8000G, extremely rare GSM StarTac. It was the 8000 and the 7000, which is that one, were the only GSM StarTacs to work, that work in the United States on the 1900 megahertz frequency. Um, really nice. What the, the difference is They've got the pop-up Motorola, really, really nice. Uh, that this, I think this is the only type of Motorola that has the pop-up lettering. Uh, both of them are gray, so if you're looking for a GSM StarTac, they, I think they're pretty much the only gray ones, and they're also the only one that have the OK and the clear up here. The non-GSM StarTacs have them down here. So if you're looking and the person doesn't know what kind of phone he has, that's how you can tell. Um, anyways, this thing is from 96, and because GSM came out in the United States in 95, and in 95 and 96 pretty much were the only years that used a full-size SIM, so what I have here is a full-size SIM adapter, and this is my regular SIM card, and I slip it in the little pocket there. But the normal ones were actually this size. Pretty ridiculous. I don't know why they had to make them like that. Um, anyways, this slips in. There's this little slot back here. Uh, they had to make this phone wider because it needed to fit the... You see it just barely fits in with as far as width. And so they had to widen the phone out. You see it's a bit flared out here. Um, 
And it was really nice grip. You've got the grip on the side so that you're not you're not messing around with that. Uh, this one was originally used with Packbell, which was bought by Singular, which was bought by AT&T. So, anyways, that's the history on this. It's got the standard StarTAC antenna there. Um, searching for signal. We've got green backlight here. Um, and pretty much this phone is not user friendly at all. Uh, really sad. Uh, we got the menu, um, messages. It does do texts, which a lot of the other star texts do not do outgoing texts, they just do incoming. Um, but here, message editor, that's how they phrased, right, do you want to write a message? Was message editor. I don't know why they had to make it so evasive. But, and then when you go into it, it goes into your last message. So I guess the last thing I typed was J, really important text message I was typing. Um, so it says J and I actually have to erase it before I can write something new. So, um, anyways, I'm writing nonsense. And then you go, okay, send message, you'd send it. Enter number, you cannot search for a number, so you're gonna have to memorize the phone numbers you wanna text on this. Uh, super inconvenient. Anyways, that's that. You see we do get service and I'm going to just go ahead and place a call for you. This is with my GSM uh, SIM card and you can hear it. It calls. It calls, believe it or not. Um, anyways, it does have caller ID. Best phone ever. Extremely rare. I just wanted to do some footage of this because it's unbelievably rare. It does have vibrate. It's got a status light up here flashing green because I have service. Um, these buttons over here uh, navigate to the volume control. Uh, I had to turn the keypad volumes off for some reason. The keypad volumes and the ringer volumes are attached. So in order to actually hear what I was being told on the phone, I had to turn this up all the way and it was making my keys blow up on me so I went ahead and turned those off. Uh, no more keypad volume for me. Um, Anyways, it it's pretty much awesome. Pretty much the best phone ever. Uh, thanks. Alright, next phone I'm going to show you is the Nokia 5190. This is the 5190, that's the 6190. 6190 was uh, more the businessman phone. When this was the businessman's wife's phone type of a deal. Uh, had a bunch of different face plates. Uh, really, really fun interactive phone for back in the day. Uh, anyways, I pulled the battery off and you push that up to release this and then you desperately try to sip, slip your SIM card in there, push it down, lock it, lock and load the battery, turn this on, um, you've got your, this is like the all purpose key here. Pretty much that was like the menu or yes. This is the yes button, that's the no button. Uh, and then these are up and down. Uh, so we got the time up there, AT&T network. This phone does not have vibrate, so kind of inconvenient. I'm not much of a ringer type of a person. But anyways, we do have the telephone book here, my SIM phone book. Can be navigated to just by pushing the up and down from the home or by going into phone book messages, we do have text messages and whatnot. Um, pretty much the same standard late 90's uh, Nokia layout here. You got the regular games, got Snake, pretty much the only one that's fun is Snake, that's why I keep mentioning it. Um, calculator clock, ringtones, uh, monophonic ringtones does not have polyphonic ringtones, um, which pretty much means that you get a bunch of beeps for a ring as opposed to an actual song. There's no way that's happening. Um, but anyways, it does make a call. You can hear. Makes a call. This thing is from 1990. Seven. This came out. This and the 6190 that I'm about to show you both came out in '97. Uh, so a couple of years before the 8290 and the 8890 that I have shown you, 
I got really cushy buttons on it. Pretty much stress relievers here if you want to poke at the buttons. Um, and you hit that. If you hold it down, it totally shuts it off. If you just tap it, it gives you this options here, and you can choose what kind of call mode you want to be on. Um, but I am going to switch off very urgent. I'm going to do it quickly. And that's the 5190 for you. Next up is going to be the Nokia 6190, the businessman phone. I read online that this is the phone that made the dot coms. So it's really popular in the uh, late 90s in Silicon Valley. Um, you got the cool buttons here, got, got the nice, really vibrant colors. Nine, you wouldn't want to be pushing that unless it's an emergency. That's why it's red. Um, anyways, let's put the SIM in this. Goes in the same way. This is set up pretty much just like a 5190 as far as the back. Uh, put this in. Do that. Do that. Push this little button up here. Um, we have, I don't know if, I think, I guess this must be like early infrared. There isn't two player snake on this phone. I don't really know what that was used for. Um, I know that I have no reason to use it now. Um, anyways, messages, call log, profile settings, forwarding. Did get some call forwarding on this bad boy. All the Nokia's had that option. Games, same games. Dice. In case you want to get brushed up on your dice skills. I've heard that is a game of skills, so that's why I guess it's on a Nokia Businessman phone. Um, got the calendar for those important dates. Uh, keyboard lock. Uh, pretty much lock on your phone. I think if you do that, yeah. If you push this button and this button down here, it locks them. And then uh, to unlock, you do the same thing. So that's a little shortcut for you. Um, anyways, this phone also does work. Uh, like all my phones, still functions. Um, you can hear it's functioning. Um, got the time up there. The little button down there means it's PM. Uh, anyways, side profile. Down here you could plug in a headset there. That's to charge it in there. Um, antenna there, nice and stubby. Uh, this awkward thing covering up a uh, screw. Um, I don't really know. I guess it must be a pretty important screw because all the Nokia's that look like this have a little thing back there. Um, anyways, that's the 6190 for you. Next phone I'm going to be showing you is the Sony Ericsson. This is a T28, T28Z. Um, the two that work in the United States are the T28Z and the T28 World, so if you're looking for one, you can have one of those two. Um, I got this from Craigslist and offered the guy like five bucks to ship it. Um, anyways, this thing I bought new. Uh, let's put the SIM. Uh, really awkward battery. I don't know, like they were trying to pretend like it's thin because like when you look at it from the side it looks thin, but then you flip it and it's like, oh wow. That thing is bulging out. They're not tricking me. Anyways, let's release that. Uh, try to slide the SIM in. Put this back on. Super stubby antenna. I like that. Oh yeah, I didn't point this out. This button here, this is spring-loaded, so you know, you're an important businessman trying to get a call, you know, close that $100,000 deal or whatever uh, was an important price back in 1999. And so you do this one-handed, push this, flips on open for you. Uh, really nice. Uh, you'd think that this thing would get good service because the antenna is unbelievably big and is about a quarter of the size of the phone. But this is the only one of my phones that does not get service in my room where we're sitting right now. Um, if I go outside and hold it up for like a bunch of minutes, I might be lucky enough to get a bar. But for the most part, a crappy service on this phone. Uh, you've got the key buttons here. Uh, really nice key buttons. 
These are the up and down arrows. They're sort of left and right, but they mean up and down. Um, actually, yeah, so let's go to the menu. Pretty much you push one of these and it goes to the menu. Um, we got messages here. Uh, got the nice three line display. Really big, really huge display. Um, the messages works pretty straightforward. Uh, extras, you've got we've got vibrate on here, alarm clock, timer, stopwatch, calculator, games, Tetris. So you think Tetris? How am I supposed to play that on a three line display? Well, you do it. Start. Let's push yes. All right. Resume. Yes. You do it this way. You have to turn the phone, and then you can play some Tetris at on an awkward angle. So that's kind of fun to be able to do that. You got solitaire, um, shortcuts, no network still, thank you very much. That's the battery meter. Uh, over here gives you the date profile. It really, really inconspicuous information that you never need. I don't know why they dedicate an entire button to that, but they did. So, anyways, that is the that's the T28Z mobile phone from 1999. Okay, the next one I'm going to show you is the uh, the Motorola StarTac 7000G right here. No pop-up lettering, sadly. Um, it is gray like the 8000G. It does have the call and the end call buttons up there like the 8000G. Um, Alright, so anyways, pretty much the same layout. Uh, I need to get my SIM card adapter from the 8000. So I'm going to eject that by doing that. Really, really high quality eject system. Um, and I'm going to slip my SIM in here and put the credit card SIM in the slot here just like the 8000. Um, turn it on. Makes a nice beep sound. This one doesn't have a battery meter. Or at least it doesn't here. For some reason they just decided to put a little battery there. But um, in order to actually get to a battery meter you have to push function 4, I think, shows the battery meter. Yeah, see, and then, so it does have a battery meter, but for some reason it was not put on the actual, uh, whatever, home screen. Um, anyways, the crappier quality screen. Uh, gets a little bit crappier service. That little arrow means that I'm roaming. Uh, voice stream, so that doesn't matter. Roaming charges don't apply in the United States anymore. Um, you got the same thing here. Uh, pretty much, there's not much of a difference between the 8000 and the 7000 G. Call quality is a little bit worse on this. No pop-up lettering, which is the most important feature. Um, crappier display, crappier software, a little bit crappier, but it still does do incoming and outgoing texts. Anyways, that is the 7000 G. Okay, I'm going to be showing you the Rainbow Star Attack today. Just came in the mail. Uh, from Vietnam this morning. I'm really happy to have it. This thing is basically it's brand new. Um, as you can see, I mean there's no marks anywhere on this phone. 10 is dead straight. Um, no scratches on the screen. Unbranded. I'm going to be putting my SIM card in this now to show you guys how it works. Put the antenna up so we get better service. I had to put a 7000G motherboard in this um, because they never made this in the United States and it doesn't work on US frequencies. Um, but basically what the rainbow is is a European version of the 7000G so I figured it would be most appropriate to put that board in because of screen matches. Um, we've got the little mock battery meter thing up there and you've got to go there to actually look at the battery. Um, 
We're on AT&T right now. Let's place a call, see if it wants to call my voicemail for me. As you can see, it actually works. So that's awesome. I'm really happy with the phone. It's really awesome. It's got the pop-up Motorola, like the 8000G. It's got the red battery, which is really high class. This thing is definitely the holy grail of StarTax. It's got the thing to pop out the SIM back here. Full-size SIM. Really good looking phone. Happy to have it. Um, that's about all. Alright, so I've been getting some requests to upload more videos, so I'm going to do that today. As you can see, my collection's grown substantially in size since the last one I uploaded. Uh, this is uh, the Black 8000G. Um, I have a thin battery for it. I've got the gray thin batteries too on the 7000 now. Um, I was able to actually get those on eBay and I got batteries from China and replaced them because the ones in here were dead. Um, so anyways, this is the Black 8000. Turn this bad boy on. I uh, redid the startup screen so now it has the European Motorola StarTac with the GSM up there in the corner. Um, it's a good phone, unbranded, uh, works great. Not much more to say about this because it's exactly like the gray 8000 I've got. So that's about all. Okay, this next phone is the Nokia 9290 Communicator. Um, this is the second in the Communicator line by Nokia. This is from um, I think 2001, they made the 9000 communicator. They did make a variant of that for the United States uh, with the black and white screen. Let's turn this thing on and see see how it works. Got the SIM card. You gotta seriously pry that off. Pop it in. Um, battery goes in like that. And then we go here to power. Things powering up. This is in the car phone style as far as you dial from one side, you push call, and then that's the speaker, so you hold it up to your head that way. Um, so that's kind of fun. <laughs> uh, it's got the blue backlight. It doesn't have any games like the regular snake or anything on it uh, much too executive for that I guess anyways let's open it up there's the beautiful startup screen there and this thing it was made I guess as Minority Report was coming out because the background this is how it came with the background is Minority Report background and right here on the desktop you can see we've got the Minority Report trailer video so if we push enter we can watch that really terrible quality but it it does play so that's pretty funny you can click desk to go back to desktop it's got battery down here it's got the service bars down here time desktop, uh, just all my contacts, which I probably shouldn't let you see the phone numbers of. Um, anyways, uh, this phone is pretty cool. It's color, which is really awesome for back in the early 2000s. Um, I love to use this phone. I'm always on it. Uh, it's really great. It makes it really convenient for typing text and stuff because it's got the full keyboard. Uh, the only way to turn this thing all the way off is to pull the battery out of it. Because you see we turned the outside off and the inside still on. So we'll pop the battery out and 
that's that. All right, uh, next phone is the MicroTac 3000E. This is one of two MicroTacs that work on the GSM 1900 frequencies in the United States. Um, I have the second one, but I'm working on getting it unlocked right now. I have to make a data cable in order to do that. Um, this one's branded Bell South. I've got the thin battery on it right now, thinner than the 2000E battery I just showed you guys. Um, anyways, this is the older of the two MicroTacs. Basically, the, there's the MicroTac 3000E and the 6000E, which is the one that I'm trying to get working. The 3000E is the equivalent of the 7000G for the StarTac, as far as like menu layout and all that. And the 6000E is equivalent of the 8000G with the actual battery meter and the different display and all that. Um, so anyways, full-size SIM. You can see it's got the little battery thing up there like the 7000G does. Um, it's got a little mini pull-out antenna. Um, it's got the function key there. It's got the menu back and forth. It's got the nice clear buttons. That's nice and old school for you. Um, definitely still makes calls. Call and voicemail. If you flip this closed, it automatically ends the call. However, the speaker isn't on this. Unfortunately, this is just plastic. The speaker is right there, so it's not like a lot of the analog micro tax. Uh, anyways, that's about it for this phone. Thanks for watching. Okay, the next phone I'm going to show you guys is the Select 2000E. Um, this phone, it's got the big size SIM card, the credit card SIM. So I've got to put the adapter in with my card in there. Push that up, power it on. This thing has the exact exact same layout as the 7000G with the no battery meter type of a thing and all that. In order to get the battery you gotta push function 4 and then it has it right there. Um, so it's it's a good phone. This thing, as you can see, is basically brand new. Um, I don't know that it's ever been used. I just basically stole this thing off eBay a while back. I got a really good deal. Um, anyway, same layout as the 7000G. Messages, you go on there. Voicemail, receive messages, outgoing. Editor, with a curse word in it right now. Um... <laughs> Anyways, uh, it's, it's a good phone. It gets good service. It's definitely bulky, so that's always a plus. Um, I guess that's that's about it I've got for this phone. Okay, the next phone I'm going to show you guys is the Motorola V3682. This is basically a GSM V50 that works on the 1900 network. It's all unlocked. You can see it's in really good shape. They made some improvements on the interface from the 8000G StarTac in this phone, although it is really similar. Uh, let's pop the battery in. Pop it in like that. Put the back cover on. got the vibrate feature. It has the same antenna as the StarTax. Um, basically the same key layout. It lets you, however, one of the main differences that I appreciate is this thing lets you search your contact book when you send text messages. Unlike the StarTax where you have to actually memorize the phone number you're going to send it to, you can browse through your contacts list on this one. It's got the battery meter, all that, basically all the same um, as the StarTac 8000G, except it is more convenient to send messages, more convenient to do some other things too. 
Uh, this phone is freaking tiny compared to my hand. I mean, you can see it's tiny and it's thick, so it's kind of a fun phone to play with. It's got the status meter up there, blinking green, because I have service right now. Um, I would highly recommend this phone. It's a really fun phone to use. Uh, that's that's about all I've got to say. Okay, guys, this is a, this is the CF388. This is kind of the twin, the flip phone twin of the CH I just showed you. Uh, let me put the SIM card in the back here and get it up and running for y'all. Pop that, hold down that, get it started up. Better cover up the screen so you guys don't see my mobile phone number again. It's pretty cool. I like this phone. It's got the same sort of clear coating over the keys as the other one, which is really classy, very 90s style. It's got Pac Bell there, Pac Bell there. Um, we're connected now to AT&T. The funny thing about this is it has a dedicated voicemail button right there. So you push that, calling voicemail, plain and simple. Which is kind of, it, it's actually kind of convenient to be honest. I do. This is the Ericsson CH388. Um, really cool phone. I just got these unlocked. This and the CF388 are basically the same phone except the CF has flip down cover. I'll show you guys that one as well. Um, I was having issues unlocking these. I couldn't get the code to unlock them so I had to figure out how to do a software unlock. I was able to get a cable from some people over in Norway or Sweden. I don't remember exactly what country. Um, got that sent over. Got them unlocked with the software on my computer. Um, so now they're all up and running. These phones are they tie. I gotta cover up the screen because on startup it says my phone number, but it says welcome up there, and then my mobile number does those three things is saying that I have service right now. As you can see it's now connected to AT&T, status light green. Really fun phone to have. Let's give a call. And call voicemail. It's connected. It works. Over there we've got the battery meter, over there we've got uh, service meters, left and right, go to the menu, uh, info, forwarding, all that, it's got a calculator, um, pretty basic phone, but it's super fun, just because it looks like a house phone to me, I mean, you don't really see cell phones that look like this. Anyways, uh, I'll show you guys the next phone in a sec. This is a really awesome phone. This is a Nokia 7190 uh, with the European housing on it, which is kind of like a reflective, like, I don't know how the camera's seeing it right now, but it goes from green to purpley sort of color, depending on how, how you see it. I don't know how to get it to purple right now. Um, anyways, believe you me, it turns purple. Uh, I'm going to put the SIM in the back here. Slide this over. Turn this bad boy on. This does not have vibrate, so it's just ringing. Um, it's got the really cool retractable piece there with the awesome buttons. I really like this phone's buttons. Um, it's got this to scroll through menus instead of the regular Nokia thing. So it can be kind of fun and then you push down to select and gets you back to the home page. This has a Snake 2. Uh, yeah, Snake 2 on it. Oops. So, it's got some new games, which is fun. It's always fun to play some Snake, too. Very classic. 
Um, this does get service. It's not wanting to get it right now. I don't get the best 1900 service up at my house. Um, anyways, really awesome phone. It's got infrared. So I guess if you have another one, you can play multiplayer Snake 2. Uh, kind of like the original Snake in the 8800 series Motorola, or uh, Nokia's. So I would I would recommend buy this phone. It's an awesome phone. It's got the thin battery on it. Really sleek. Nothing not to love about this.